technology has always been considered a dry field and only suitable for men. However, reality has shown that many pink shadows still rise and hold a lot of power in technology corporations. For a long time, technology has been considered a playground for men. Despite many incentive policies, the ratio of female employees at technology companies is still significantly lower than male employees. However, many women have shown their qualities to become vocal and powerful figures in the technology world. On the occasion of International Women's Day March 8, let's take a look at the powerful shadows in the technology world today. Lisa Su, President and CEO of Chip Company AMD Lisa Su is currently the Chief Executive Officer, CEO, and President of Chip Company Advanced Micro Devices, AMD, one of the largest chip manufacturers in the world. She is the first woman to lead a company on the Fortune 500 list, America's 500 largest companies, and is considered one of the most influential leaders in the technology industry. Lisa Su was born on November 7, 1969, in Taiwan. She received her bachelor's degree in electrical engineering from the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, MIT, then received her master's and engineering degrees in electrical engineering at the same institute. Lisa Su joined AMD in 2012 and became CEO and president of this company two years later. At the time Lisa Su became leader of AMD, the company was on the verge of bankruptcy, but under her leadership, AMD became one of the largest chip manufacturers in the world and competed fairly. With Intel in the computer chip market. Melanie Perkins, founder and CEO of software company Canva. Despite her young age, born in 1987, Melanie Perkins is considered one of the most powerful women in the technology world, as the co-founder and CEO of Canva, a graphic design platform. Online is very popular nowadays. Melanie Perkins and her husband, Cliff Aubrecht, and friend Cameron Adams, founded Canva together in January 2023. Perkins has held the role of CEO of Canva since that time. Under the direction of Melanie Perkins, Canva quickly became a popular online design platform, supporting both beginners and experienced designers. Canva currently has more than 100 million regular users and the company's value is estimated at US$40 billion. Melanie Perkins is considered a shining example and inspiration for young entrepreneurs, especially women. Safra Katz, CEO of software company Oracle Safra Katz was born in Israel, to a Jewish family, immigrated to the U.S. in 1967, when she was six years old. She earned her bachelor's degree at the Wharton School, University of Pennsylvania, and received her Juris Doctor degree from the University of Pennsylvania at the age of 25. After graduating, Katz worked at the investment bank Donaldson, Lufkin, and Genret and became a senior vice president at this bank. In 1999, she joined software company Oracle as senior vice president. Katz joined the company's board of directors two years later and was appointed chairman in 2004. In 2014, she was appointed chief executive officer, CEO, of Oracle. Under the leadership of Safra Katz, Oracle has made many important strides, helping Oracle become one of the largest software companies in the world. In addition to her role at Oracle, Safra Katz also teaches accounting at Stanford Business School and was elected to the board of directors of Walt Disney Company in 2017. Robin Denholm, President of Electric Car Company Tesla In September 2018, Elon Musk was forced to lead the chairmanship of electric car company Tesla because of allegations of stock price manipulation and pressure from shareholders. The person appointed to replace Elon Musk is Robin Denholm. Robin Denholm was born in 1963 in the state of New South Wales, Australia. She graduated with a bachelor's degree in economics from the University of Sydney and received a master's degree in commerce from the University of New South Wales. She worked for seven years at the Australian branch of Toyota as a financial director, before moving to the U.S. to work at technology company Sun Microsystems. In 2014, Robin Denholm joined electric car company Tesla before becoming chairman of the company's audit committee. Denholm was then appointed chief financial officer, CFO, and chief operating officer, COO, at Tesla, before being appointed chairman of the company. Linda Yaccarino, CEO of Social Network X, 
formerly Twitter. Another shadow plays a key role in Elon Musk's company, which is Linda Yaccarino, CEO of X, formerly Twitter, the social network that Elon Musk spent $42 billion US dollars to own and Musk holds full decision-making authority. Linda Yaccarino, born in 1963, has a lot of experience in the field of media management, having been president in charge of global advertising for NBC Universal, a large American media and entertainment company. Under Yaccarino's direction, NBC Universal has achieved revenue of up to 10 billion US dollars per year. Linda Yaccarino is famous for her assertive working style and is very compatible with Elon Musk's working style. Therefore, in June 2023, Elon Musk appointed Yaccarino to the position of CEO of X, with the goal of helping this social networking platform go in the right direction after being acquired by Musk. Gwen Shotwell, President and Chief Operating Officer, COO, SpaceX Elon Musk shows that he has great confidence in the leadership abilities of Pink Shadows when he continues to appoint a woman to a senior position at the company he owns. Gwyn Shotwell holds a Bachelor of Science and Master's degree in Mechanical Engineering and Applied Mathematics from Northwestern University, Illinois, USA. After graduating, Shotwell enrolled in Chrysler Corp's management training program to begin a career in the auto industry, but she quickly transitioned to working in space technology when signed a contract with Space Research Corporation Aerospace Corporation. Here, she became the chief engineer of the satellite design program and participated in developing space exploration policies for NASA. Shotwell's interest in space exploration has helped him become a top candidate for a leadership position at SpaceX, the aerospace company founded by billionaire Elon Musk. In 2002, Shotwell became the 11th employee at SpaceX, serving as vice president of business development. Since then, Shotwell has gradually risen to become president and chief operating officer, COO, primarily responsible for guiding the company's development. SpaceX later became the first private company in the world to put a commercial satellite into orbit, and the first private company to launch a spacecraft to carry humans into orbit and to the International Space Station. ISS Shotwell was later honored as one of the most influential women in technology and one of the 100 most influential people in the world by Time magazine in 2020. Susan Wojcicki, former YouTube CEO, senior advisor to Google. Susan Wojcicki initially had no intention of pursuing a career in technology. She graduated with honors from Harvard University, majoring in literature and history. Wojcicki became interested in the technology field during his senior year at Harvard. After graduating from Harvard, she went on to earn a Master of Science in Economics from the University of California Santa Cruz and a Master of Business Administration from the University of California. After finishing his educational career, Wojcicki began entering Silicon Valley by working in marketing at chip company Intel. After that, Wojcicki lent his garage to Larry Page and Sergey Brin to work and this is where Google was born. Susan Wojcicki also joined Google and became the company's 16th employee, then became the marketing director of this young company. Susan Wojcicki had great contributions in developing Google's advertising system, before becoming Google's vice president of advertising and commerce. It was Wojcicki who proposed that Google buy YouTube in 2006, for a price of 1.65 billion US dollars. Wojcicki then became CEO of YouTube in 2014 and held that position until 2023. Susan Wojcicki said she wanted to resign from her position as CEO of YouTube to have more time to spend with her family and take care of her health. However, she is currently still a senior advisor at Google. Marissa Meyer, founder of artificial intelligence firm Sunshine Contacts. Born in 1975, Marissa Meyer has been famous for being an intelligent person since she was a student. After graduating from high school, she was accepted into a total of 10 universities to which she applied. In the end, Meyer decided to choose the prestigious Stanford School. She graduated with a bachelor's degree in symbolic systems in 1997, then went on to graduate with a master's degree in computer science also at Stanford. Meyer's field of expertise is artificial intelligence. After graduating from Stanford, Meyer immediately received 14 different job offers. 
Her friends helped Mayer decide to choose Google as the place to start after eight hours of discussion. Marissa Meyer became the first female employee and the 20th employee at Google. She helped Google develop search engines and participated in a long list of key Google products, such as Maps, News, Web Browser Toolbars. Marissa Meyer became CEO and President at Yahoo in 2012, with the expectation of helping the shipwreck Yahoo overcome difficulties to regain its old glory. However, Meyer's efforts were not enough and after Yahoo was acquired by Verizon in 2017 for $4.8 billion, she left the company. Marissa Meyer, then along with Enrique Munoz Torres, a former colleague at Yahoo and Google, founded Sunshine Contacts, a company specializing in developing artificial intelligence. At the age of 48, Marissa Meyer is still famous for her beauty and charm. Mayer was voted one of the most beautiful women of 2013. Kimberly Bryant, founder and CEO of Black Girls Code. Kimberly Bryant, born in 1967, showed excellence in math and science from an early age and won a scholarship to Vanderbilt University, Tennessee, USA. There, she earned an engineering degree in electrical engineering, along with bachelor's degrees in math and computer science. Over the past two decades, Bryant has held many technical leadership positions in several pharmaceutical and biotechnology companies, including Novartis and Merck. It wasn't until Bryant's daughter showed an interest in computer science that she realized how few other black women were working in science, technology, engineering, and math. One of the reasons for this lack is because women of color do not have many conditions to access knowledge about science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. In 2011, Bryant founded Black Girls Code, a nonprofit organization based in San Francisco, to support girls of color from 7 to 17 years old to participate in science subjects, technology, engineering, and mathematics. Here, girls can learn the skills they need to work in the technology industry of their choice. The organization aims to help 1 million girls of color become proficient in programming by 2040. Technology has always been considered a dry field and only suitable for men. However, reality has shown that many pink shadows still rise and hold a lot of power in technology corporations. For a long time, technology has been considered a playground for men. Despite many incentive policies, the ratio of female employees at technology companies is still significantly lower than male employees. However, many women have shown their qualities to become vocal and powerful figures in the technology world. On the occasion of International Women's Day March 8, let's take a look at the powerful shadows in the technology world today.